Hello, and welcome to the first Blender tutorial in my series I'm planning on doing here on YouTube. First of all, before we get into anything, I'd like to announce that I have a website. It's called BlenderMind. Um, and as you can see, it is a forum that I've set up, and I'd like to see some... Uh, some communities starting here. If anyone would like to join, if anyone has any questions about Blender and need a a quick answer on the forum here, then uh, head on over and I'll help you out. All right. So today's lesson will be in volumetrics in Blender. Now, volumetrics has just started to gain support in Cycles which is a really great thing because cycles gives us a lot of control over you know what we want to do artistically for volumetrics to work in cycles especially um, or for smoke in cycles and fire basically any voxel data you need one of these builds uh, for it to work um, I'm running this one here so once you extract the file that you download, you'll have this. And Blender will run straight out of just this. You don't need to install anything. Um, I actually run Blender off of a flash drive in some places. So uh, run Blender, and here we go. OK, so we have our default cube which we will be using as our domain object for the smoke simulation. You can go ahead and delete the default light. Scale the cube on the z-axis up a bit so we can have smoke rising and then just scale it up on every axis. So then we want to Bring this up a bit, go into wireframe mode, and add something you would like to burn. Um, I'm going to add the ever so faithful monkey. So here's Suzanne here, and we're just going to rotate her, bring her up. Um, before we do anything else, I like to position the camera, which is always a plus. Um, I did that by hitting Control, Alt, and Numpad 0. So I'm going to fly our camera around here. Looks good. All right. So now we need to select our domain object and apply smoke physics go into domain we can keep a resolution of 32 right now because we just need to add Suzanne as the flow here and uh, we need to select fire and smoke smoke color you might want to bring up a bit actually I'm sorry smoke color does not work in cycles yet unless you add an attribute for it so um, ignore that for now. We can actually we can uh, control that within the node editor. Okay, so now if we hit Alt A, we can see an ugly animation of smoke and fire. And you say, um, well, for those of you who are new with smoke, you would expect that the smoke and flames will be rendered when you hit render but that is not the case it's nothing niche nada okay so we need to add a material uh, but first, before we add a material, we need to tweak things a little bit. I'm going to bring this 
um, up to 75. Um, dissolve, I'll say 10. And make sure it's on slow, otherwise it'll look unnatural. Turn on adaptive domain. And now that we have adaptive domain, actually, I'm thinking about doing like 80. Um, turn on smoke high resolution, and this is perhaps the the most um, important part of making realistic fire is this noise method strength right here. If we play this out, you'll see that the fire is quite uh, bumpy and noisy and it doesn't look too natural. If you look at a bonfire, there is no bumpy noisiness going on there. Um, for big, uh, really large scale fires, that is, um, you know, it, it's a good thing to have with explosions and things like that. But with just rising fire, just regular old burning fire, I find it to be not good. So, you want smoke high resolution because it will uh, increase the quality a lot. But you want the strength to be zero. And what that will do we'll start to see something that acts a lot more like fire. We can turn the vorticity up to make it a little bit more convincing. And we can even add another... Actually, I'm going to turn on the base resolution. I'm going to bring that up a bit. So here we go. we have something that is that looks pretty good so let's go into the node editor we can just snap right into there by dragging this corner out this little thing here and node editor then make sure you are in cycles render by the way hit use nodes come in you can hit shift space to view this in a larger scale you have more space you want to delete that diffuse and then you need to add an input attribute type in density of course make sure it's spelled right otherwise it won't work at all put in a volume scatter shader and a volume absorption shader. Now, I'm going to shift space out of here. Um, you have to switch to the CPU to render things. Don't worry about open shading language. Um, that needs to be used when you're using uh, add-ons and whatnot. Okay. So, now we need to bring this color up to white. Plug the factor in to the density on the absorption and the density on the scatter. I usually leave anisotropy alone, but it what anisotropy does is it allows light to pass through the volume in a different way. So I, I usually leave it alone because I don't find much use for it. And to make things easier, just hold down shift, left click, and drag down. That'll connect them there. It does absolutely nothing except for the fact that it looks a little cleaner. And now we can just add a whole line of different things to make this look better. Of course we need to plug these into the material output. That's why I wouldn't render just now. If you see there. So, we need to add a shader. Add shader. Actually, you know what? Let's try a mix. Do a mix. Mix shader. Connect these. Connect that to the volume. Oops. Connect that to the volume. And now we have some hints of a volume coming out. Um, we need some lighting. Uh, bring this up. I'm gonna actually use a uh, an image. Nah, actually, 
No. Okay. Put that about there. We still need a light, so I'm gonna add a plane. Actually, no. Mesh lighting takes a lot longer. So I'm gonna add a point lamp. Bring this up here. Emission 200 probably. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now we can bring our world down here until it looks better. Okay, so we can already see our smoke starting to form here. Which is nice. Okay. So now um, we need to reselect our domain object. And you said, okay, so there's smoke, but what about uh, fire? Well, news is we're not done with smoke yet. There's several tweaks you can do, and I'm just going to zoom in and shift B and render only a part of this so it takes a lot less time. So we can actually keep this rendering. Um, and now we can add a color and a brightness and contrast. This is important. Contrast, you bump that up, you're going to have some ugliness going on. But the reason I bumped it up is to give it a more natural look. Because it's too, without bumping it up, it's just, uh, it looks a lot more large scale than it should be. Maybe even just do 0.5. And then, in front or, yeah, in front of the brightness and contrast node, we need to add a converter, math, multiply, and just play around with the value until you find something Something that you enjoy looking at. Blue 7. Contrast 1. So now what this does is it makes our smoke look a lot thicker, which is nice. We can actually bring the smoke color down a little bit. Since it is burning smoke. Or it's, uh, you know, the result of something burning. I'm gonna bring the black down or the background down all the way to black. This will help immensely with things. Just to get our point across here with the whole fire thing. Alright. So I'm gonna add a plane real quick. Down below. And this plane is going to act as a indicator that our fire is emitting light. So you don't really need to do anything, just add a diffuse shader into it and you're fine. Alright, as far as uh, the fire goes, we can see we have our smoke set up. It's pretty simple, actually. Not too bad. Now, we can add a add shader and another attribute node. Type flame into this one. Add a converter, math, multiply. This is going to help us with our um, intensity of it, really. And uh, add a converter, color ramp, put that up here. Add a shader, emission. Plug this value from the multiply into the strength. Plug the factor into the factor of the color ramp and then plug the color into the color of the emission. And then we can just connect that there. And if we render this, you can see that our smoke is now emitting light. But there's no color, so let's fix that. Uh, first of all, first off, I'd like to get a better frame. Looks a little bit better. There we go. That looks better. Ah, see, we can actually see some of the fingers of the fire coming up. It looks a lot, you know, it looks pretty nice. So let's see what this looks like here. Okay. 
Um, we can multiply this by two, maybe. Also, I'd like to add in a contrast. Let's let's uh, add some contrast to this. So, go to color, brightness, and contrast. Plug that in there. And you can go a little crazy with this. It's pretty fun. Okay. Now we don't have color. So, let's give it some color. The black, alpha zero. This uh, white here, I do an alpha of like point twenty-eight, And believe it or not, I'll be adding a blue one here. Because sometimes you see blue and fire and it's really cool. It's like, oh, that's awesome, you know. <laughs> okay, so, see the blue and the fire. Bring that up to 1.99.2, whatever. Alright, so here. Bring our alpha up. Now, we need to make sure that every node has a fairly, well, Preferably all the way up on the white or the uh, brightness scale. And I'm going to bring that one up there, like that. So just follow along what I'm doing. Of course, this is going to be full alpha. Bring this here, like that. Okay, here's an important part that makes no sense whatsoever, but it works. Brown. You need brown. Alpha. And if he alpha, probably 3.8. Put that really close to your uh, orange here. If you want more flames, just drag these up. Okay, so we have fire. You can still, you know, you can play around with it. But, we have fire. You can see some of the blue coming in, not too much, which is great. And, uh, yeah. So there we go with the fire here. Um, I could use more contrast, I think. It looks a little blurry. So, uh, five, maybe? Value. I'll do 1.5. So there we go. We have smoke, fire, and objects that are being illuminated by this fire. The smoke is also being illuminated by the fire, too, which is I thought was really cool when I found that it does that. So um, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Um, subscribe if you ever so want to. And uh, if you have any requests for tutorials or um, any questions about this one, just uh, comment on the video. And I hope you have a great day, a great life, and I hope you do well in CG artwork if you're planning on doing it in life. Um, I know I am, so, okay, well, thank you for viewing this once again, and uh, have, have a nice day, and I'll see you next time.